Hi guys and welcome back to Creative Pet Keeping. My name is Kasha, I am your host and today I am finally going to show you my version of the DIY CO2 bottle. I put it off one extra week because I was super sick. I'm still sick but last week I was kind of sounding like a dying frog and no one wants to listen to that. So hopefully this will be a much better upgrade. Be sure to subscribe to this channel if you already haven't so you don't miss out on all my other awesome DIY and pet care tutorials. So without further ado, let's get started. Now there are a lot of tutorials how to do this on YouTube, so I will actually link a few that I think were also very good. There's, you know, no one good way of doing things. I'm just going to show you the way I've done it in the past and it worked for me. But I also want to show you some other options so you can kind of choose what works for you. But what we're going to need is a small bottle uh, because this is going to be a very small CO2 setup. It's going to be for a 20 gallon tall tank. And I'm going to do a small CO2 output. So it's going to help the plants, but it's not going to be like a huge thing. Um, I'm going to have a cup of sugar. I have a little bit of warm water. And I have some active dry yeast that I'm going to be um, activating in there. I'm going to be using uh, one tablespoon of yeast. I have some more warm water, a funnel, airline tubing, a air stone to help um, break up the bubbles. And I'm going to be using a razor to cut a hole in here instead of a drill. A lot of people use a drill. It's easier with a drill, but not a lot of us have power tools. So I wanted to try this. If you are a younger member of the audience, hello banana, please ask an adult help you with this. Do not use sharp tools or razors um, on your own because you can cut yourself. And you can either use duct tape to try to cover up the hole or silicone duct tape will be less effective and it might leak. But if that's all you can access, uh, if you really layer the duct tape over and over again, you might get away with it. I'm just going to use a little bit of this silicone. <coughs> By the way, guys, I'm really sick, so bear with me here. So let's get started. So here's my bottle. Um, lately I noticed that a lot of water bottles have had smaller, less secure caps. So I tried to find a beverage that had a really strong and secure cap. This will help prevent leakage. And then I washed it out a little bit. It's still not perfect, but it's pretty clean. So what I'm going to do is put my airline tube right here and then I'm going to trace it with a marker so that I can kind of get an idea of how big of a hole to make. So here is my little guideline and I'm going to cut a hole now. I think it's a little easier when you hold the bottle when the cap is screwed on and when you cut. Uh, be sure to uh, stay safe, be careful when you do this and as I said before if you are a younger member of the audience please ask an adult to help you. So here's my hole. As you can see, it's not ideal. What I did is I would put in the razor in different angles and press it in in circles and kind of work my way around until the little middle piece right here popped off. This is definitely not ideal. You, It would be a lot better to use a drill, but hey, not all of us have a drill. Or maybe depending on what country you're in, you might not have access to one at the moment. So if you don't, this is option number two. You want to try to make it a little bigger. We will compensate for this with um, tape and a lot of silicone. Let's see if it's right in. Okay, so I put a little bit of tape um, just to hold it in place and I'm going to silicone first the inside and then I might either silicone over the tape or I might take off the tape, but the tape at the moment, that's why it's ugly, is just here to hold it in place. So I'm going to get my silicone and silicone all around the edges. Okay, so as you can see, I siliconed the inside. You can see kind of better right here. Also, banana's bed is right here conveniently. But I put some on the inside to kind of seal the inside part and I'm going to seal it again on the outside. Now this is 
uh, this dries in 30 minutes. So, and I put a thin layer so it will dry uh, fairly fast. So, but I'm going to kind of leave this alone for 30 minutes before I continue with the rest of my setup. Okay, so I have some warm water here. And I'm going to put in a tablespoon, well, a little less than a tablespoon of yeast. And that is because I don't want a huge um, CO2 production. So I don't need that much. So I'm going to leave this alone so it could activate. When it gets kind of fuzzy looking like this, it's a good sign. That means your water is warm. Now I just kind of set it aside. And let me show you, by the way. This is what I managed to do. So I sealed it pretty well on this side with the silicone. And then I duct tape. I siliconed it again on the outside and duct taped it a little bit. It's ugly, but it's turning into an interesting experiment to see if it really works. And here I have some warm water. And I'm going to put in my sugar. <coughs> I have a cup of sugar. By the way, sorry, I'm still sick. Just going to pour. Here. There's something in here. Let me get it out. Something dirty. Ugh. Now, back in the day, when I first made my um, CO2, uh, DIY CO2, I used to just do this where I would pour in the water and I would actually just let the sugar sit at the bottom of the bottle like this and the yeast would kind of feed on it anyways but now I've seen a lot of people mix it in their um, DIY videos so I'm not gonna mix it all the way entirely and I think I made too much water by the way it might not fit in my bottle but I am gonna kind of mix it as much as possible so some of it is dissolved in the water uh, if I have any left over, I'll just put in a lid on this and just, you know, when I have to replace this with new sugar and yeast, which should be about in two to four weeks, roughly. You gotta observe um, to see how much you're producing. Look, there's people screaming outside. It's Easter. People, youngins, are frolicking about. So, I'm gonna mix this a little more. We're going to kind of see how this works out. It's funny because originally this was going to be like a well thought out um, DIY video. But then I realized that ever since I made my first CO2, custom CO2 bottle, it's been like seven, eight years. Um, there's so many videos out there now how to do it. So I was like, instead of making a general tutorial, I'm just going to film myself kind of experimenting and putting it together and you can follow along so as you can see most of the sugar is already mixed in the water the yeast is starting to do its thing see how it's getting cloudy over there we gotta leave the yeast for I would say a few minutes I think I have to close my windows man people the children are frolicking for sure Okay, so now the yeast is ready. You can kind of see it sort of got all fizzly and starting to bubble a little bit. The water is not as warm as I would like it to be. This would have probably activated a bit better if I used a bit warmer water. But I think we can start, 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 bleh, start putting things together. Side note. For those of you who are new, this is Banana. She's a Border Collie mix female. And on Creative Pecky being my channel, she has her own <coughs> uh, YouTube show. It's monthly, and it's called The Banana Show. And she's awesome, so you should totally check it out. So what I'm going to do, besides getting comfortable, is kind of start setting this up. And we're going to do this one-handedly, because YouTube is one of the skills you acquire by being a YouTuber, you learn how to do things with one hand. Or if you're smart, use a tripod, but, you know. That would be too easy. We like we like doing things in hard mode. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Should I pour in the yeast? Mm. I'll pour in 
my water first. I'll pour it to about this much, halfway. This is what happens when you don't properly pre-measure everything. I have way too much, but it's okay, you can save it for later. And if I don't use all of my yeast, I can use it to feed my Daphnia culture, so it's okay. And I'm going to put in the yeast. Might be able to do all yeast. Actually, yeah, I will. Uh, all this stuff up here. To get this, I'm just going to pour in a little bit of water. And just do this. Because we, we don't waste anything in the creative pet keeping household. Okay. So I have it in here. For the most part. It's not mixed up all the way. As you can see, it's kind of floating. So what you can do is either you can mix it by putting a cap if you buy two bottles that are the same kind i didn't do that you can borrow the cap from the other bottle and put the cap on and be able to shake this and really mix it up or if you're like me you can use a chopstick and that's actually what i'm going to do so i can mix it up thoroughly oh my cats are meowing at each other crazy kitties so i'm gonna get a chopstick there we go now i can mix everything up this is why I love chopsticks, they're so useful for everything. So this way, you can kind of very thoroughly, it'll still separate a little bit, but this lets you really um, mix everything. And you want there to be some space left over. So when you have... Uh, your top when you screw it on it won't be touching the water you want to get a little space up here some people leave more space I like to fill it up because this is a very small bottle so now I'm gonna do is screw and attach this on here and then we're gonna do some more fun experimental stuff with this because we're not done yet okay so about half an hour has passed as in as you can see this is producing <clears throat> a steady amount of bubbles now <coughs> you might be thinking well that's that's not a whole lot I mean it's making one bubble and then another bubble but for your tanks you don't really want it to be bubbling making a lot of bubbles per minute because you can uh, overdose on the co2 and kill your fish so you if you have a tank that is about, well, I don't know, the one I'm making is for is a 20 gallon. For a 20 gallon, this is pretty good, I think. I'm actually going to check this video, because right now, and up to this point right here, it was filming for about a minute, so what I can do is when I'm editing, I'm going to check back and actually count how many bubbles I had per minute. And the reason you want to do this beforehand is just it'll help keep your fish safe. Now what you can do is do a second bottle that you attach your uh, line into the water like this and then have another airline tubing out and then the second airline tubing will go into the tank. This will let you at all times monitor how many bubbles you are putting into the tank of CO2. But in my case, um, because I'm making a low output small bottle this should be enough also to be on the safe side what I am going to do is only put the bubbles the airline hose with the bubbles inside the tank during the daytime and at nighttime I'm gonna take it out so that way I won't be putting any new co2 into the tank at night because plants already exhale and release CO2 at night themselves. So if you have this plus 
uh, your plants, you can kill your fish. So you gotta be kind of careful. But I am pretty happy uh, at this rate that it's going in right now. I'm gonna wait another half an hour just to be sure that it's still stable and it's still going at the same rate. But within half an hour, if it's still bubbling like this, then I will attach two things. I will attach this little um, check valve. This ensures that the air will go one way, but if water backed up, it won't spill into here. So a little check valve, and then also my little... Where did it go? Oh, I don't even know where it went. Oh, there it is. It was behind the silicone. My little air stone. And this will kind of make the bubbles a lot smaller and more fine so they can be distributed into the tank. So here is the complete DIY CO2 bottle. I have the check valve right here and the little air stone. And now it's time to put it in my aquarium. So once you are ready, in the daytime when your light is on, put your air stone in the back somewhere. I have it behind the plants right there next to the intake of the filter so that way you'll suck up some of this CO2 and help redistribute it a little better too. And then as you can see I have the bottle hidden back here out of view so it's not something that um, gets in the way of the tank. So that is my little DIY uh, CO2 setup. I'll have a couple links to a, f a couple different ones I found online in the description below uh, so you can see some better ones. I know uh, Joey from King of DIY I think had two videos about them and his, his, are, his are way better well thought out than mine. Mine is just a simple, simple, cheap no tools, nothing fancy version. His is the like well thought out, but still affordable. So I just wanted to give you guys that option to look at different types. It, whenever you try to do a DIY project, I recommend that instead of just following one person that you see, that you look up how other people do it. And then based on that, um, choose what you would like to do for yourself. So if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. So that lets me know that I should make more of a certain type of video be sure to subscribe to this channel if you already haven't and I hope that you enjoyed this little uh, simple tutorial I hope you guys have an awesome day and I'll see you on Wednesday